All right, today we're dissecting that Fortnite art style. We're painting some trees. As you know, this is part of my landscape painting workshop. It's a stylized landscape painting workshop. Those are all real time hour long lessons and there's gonna be 10 of them. But for here on YouTube, I'm just gonna break down the nitty gritty of it and give you the time lapse. First thing you gotta do to paint these types of pine trees is get that body, the shape in there. So you do a rough sketch. Make sure you get some contour implication in there. Remember, we we're kind of looking up a little bit at this tree. These are all gonna be components that are gonna be dropped into a landscape painting. So you wanna draw all of these rocks and trees at the same angle. And then once you've got your sketch in place, you wanna drop the opacity on that layer down to about 15%. Now on a new layer, you're gonna create the silhouette, the mask for the body of the pine tree. And so I'm using my chisel brush here. If you're not familiar with it, it's in my brush pack. It's one of my favorite brushes, especially for, well, especially for painting landscapes. And what you do on this new layer is that you're gonna paint your mid-tone. That's like not your highlight tone and not your shadow tone, but your mid-tone, right? This is essentially your color flats and you wanna mostly just focus on the silhouette of your tree. And I, it's, I start out with a, a doodle, it's a sketch. I'm not worried about the details of those corners or edges yet. I'm just looking at like the overarching shape of this whole thing, the whole body of the tree here. And the beauty of this being on its own layer is you can select just that layer and then just paint within that mask by hitting command and then clicking on the thumbnail. Or you can click on this handy mask button right here and then anything that you paint in there is it's not gonna paint on anything that doesn't have paint on it on that layer. And while we're still just doing our color flats, let's go ahead and create the tree stump or the tree trunk. That also has to be on its own layer because when we wanna do a mask on it and just paint the trunk, we won't be fidgeting around with the edges and whatnot. And you might be wondering why the hell does it matter if it's on a new layer? Well, the reason is because we're gonna cut out all of our tree and paste it into a whole landscape and we're gonna, we don't wanna to have to be cutting it out from the background in every image. No, -uh, you don't want edges of gray. Uh, when you're putting it into your landscape. You wanna have it not on its own layer. Now that we have the body of the tree laid out as a color flat, you can just lock that layer with the mask using that checkerbox icon down there. And now you can paint in a gradient so that we get a feeling that there's light at the top of the tree and there's more shadow at the bottom. My process here is that I like to go in and paint in my shadows next. And I'm kind of referencing back to my initial sketch when we were sketching out the body of the whole thing. And I'm starting to try to get some of those pine branches in there uh, that kind of come out. If you look at a reference image of a tree from Fortnite, you definitely got these almost layered pineapple looking layered branches of this pine tree. And we're already starting to see incredible pro progress here. And having this masked off is just a, such a huge advantage because we don't have to worry about being messy about those edges. Make sure that all of your pine branches are not the same size. You want a nice varied amount of them and make sure that you've got areas where they're swooshing out and connecting to the silhouette so it feels natural. Still with the mask selection on, you can make selections within that and then paint in those darker areas so you're really casting a shadow from underneath each one of those layers of pine branches that you've got. Now you can go in and start to add some more of those more detailed pine needles sticking out of those branches using that chisel brush that I love so much. I love this brush so much. And so you can get these swooshy painting of brush strokes going on that's gonna make your branches feel like they've got a lot of energy to them and they're sweeping out. Remember that some of those are curling up if you look at the reference images from the types of trees that they put into Fortnite. And then you've got these layers of the silhouette behind it where it's curving around and they're underneath and they're behind on those edges and it's affecting the silhouette. I'm just doing a silhouette pass here to make sure that it doesn't feel like they're sloppy brush strokes, that they're feeling like they're natural and that they're consistent with the flow of the pine tree branches that we painted in. Now to get the colors for this highlight, we can create an overlay layer and we can hit that with a little bit of warm yellow. That's gonna give it a feeling that there's a bright warm sun and daylight that's hitting that top corner, that top left corner. Be sure that all of your components have the same direction of light. If you're painting rocks on this sheet and you have trees and other things, make sure that the light direction is similar in all of them or neutral light. For your highlights, don't just add white. Don't just make it lighter in values. You wanna also move the color slider up towards the warm part of the color wheel just a little bit if the light is warm in the scene and mix that in. And that's how I'm getting this highlight color. And make sure that those edges feel like they've got a little bit of a frosting on them so that it, it's got, this is just a Fortnite style thing, but we do this with rocks and other things that have a specular 
corner edge to them so that it's not dark at the corners, it's highlighted at the corners. That's a very key ingredient to stylized painting from the Warcraft style to the Fortnite style. And it's a hard thing to break if you're coming from a comic book background, but I worked on both of those games and I'm telling you, man, you gotta break that habit. You gotta learn to be more painterly about how you you've turn your forms and whatnot. I talk about this extensively in my Hearthstone painting workshops. You have to consider that the light is being projected from the top left corner, and if you've got some of these branches that are sticking out towards the viewer's eye, then some of those tips of those branches are going to be catching a little bit more light because they're sticking out from the tree. If the tree were totally flat, you wouldn't get any highlights on these, but because they're sticking out, you're going to get a little bit more of them. Now, I'm using my chisel brush a lot here, but you could also do this a lot with the, uh, with the selection tool and then using the airbrush, which you're going to see me do an awful lot as well. In fact, I found that that is the key to capturing that Fortnite style of art is to use selections with the airbrush to get nice smooth gradient transitions between your shadows and your light and then go in with, there's actually very little line painting and that's something that I'm really picking up on a lot as I do more and more of these studies. But note that the first probably 15 to 20 minutes of doing this painting of this tree, I was just trying to find the colors. Like here's the shadow color, here's the mid-tone color, here's the highlight color, and here's the overall blending. And the technique is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but once you get those colors down, the brush rendering technique comes a little bit more easily, and especially uh, because you can just use the mixer brush tool to smear colors around and blend them and create definition of your forms. And of course, if you're still struggling with how to cast shadows and how to, how to cast highlights onto your surfaces and calculate colors, then you gotta go back to the fundamentals, the basics. And those are gonna carry over into photorealistic painting or stylized painting like what you see in Fortnite. Now for the trunk, we've already done the, the selection mask, remember? I set that up as a trunk mask. And so now you, you don't have to worry about making selections or you're painting over the edges. The key thing with tree bark is to just not go too bright with anything. I mean, tree bark is pretty matte, so it's not gonna be very reflective unless if it's wet. So don't get too bright or saturated. You wanna just maybe adjust your values by like, you know, 10 or 15% if it's in shadow because it's all at the, the base of the tree. If you make it too saturated brown, it's gonna stand out, especially because the tree is all kind of a muted green. Our tree is starting to look pretty good here, but I feel like I could turn up a few of those uh, those branches just towards the end so that it feels like it's got a nice swoosh to it and also fill in some of these dark areas. Although you do wanna have some nice clustering of shadow areas for the viewer's eye to rest, but uh, making a selection of the whole tree and then adding just a little bit of a shadow so that your brightest brights towards the base of the tree at the bottom are not super bright. So most of your highlights with actual yellowish color to them are gonna be at the top left part of the tree because that's where the light's hitting it. And you can do that with a darken layer or an overlay layer, whatever is more comfortable for you, just so long as you get that gradient in there. So our tree is pretty much done as it is, but uh, if we want to get a lot of mileage out of this, we could flatten out all those layers. And of course it's on a new layer, so we could put it in front of rocks or rivers or trees or other things as much as we want. But we could make another copy over here, put it on a new layer, and then go up here to filter and then liquefy. And that allows us to really warp the hell out of this. We can get a lot of variety out of this tree if we want to add a little crooked area to the, the trunk of it or just make it a little bit more warped and distorted. This is a good way to do it is with that tool. You can make adjustments to the brightness and the saturation if you want, whatever you'd like to really make it your own. And there you have it, you have a couple of pine trees. And I think the same process is gonna to apply to any other trees. Here I'm using the custom brush that I have in my, my brush set for the, uh, the trees, for the uh, leaf brushes. And just adjusting the spacing of it a little bit to create uh, some more clustered looking more I, they're not really uh, the same type of tree there's a lot of different types of trees in the fortnite universe and in this art style so uh, but the the same kind of uh, approach applies you start with that mid-tone you add your shadows to create the clustering and the clumping and then you create your highlight areas and then you copy and paste some pieces in, make sure that your trunk is on a new layer. You make that a uh, mask so that you can begin to paint in when you just wanna like adjust the tree branches or adjust the tree trunk, add a little bit of under light to it, and then start going in and adding in a little bit of the highlights to really define the separation between shadows and highlights, making sure that the areas that are directly under 
the the clusters of leaves are going to be in shadow and then you've got a little bit of these uh, kind of rock formations at the base this is all of course just looking at a lot of trees from the in-game screenshots and from some of the 3d models to really inform the the kind of stylization there were some interesting things with the thickness of details in the fortnite art style it's one of the things that really draws me to it is just how clumpy everything is and it does remind me of my old days of working on world of warcraft type of stuff just really distorting the shapes of and the swooshes of trees but make sure if you're doing something like this make sure that it's balanced so you don't have all of your heaviest parts of your tree hanging over nothing like you have to have it kind of curling the trunk needs to curl back in to make sure that it feels like it's supporting the weight and then of course once you've gotten all your colors in place you can go in and start to add in more details and i'm of course using my leaf brush a lot but then uh, for the final touches i go in and just paint with like a straight up square pickle brush you guys know my square pickle brush it's one of my favorites i used a, a lot of the chisel brush and the square pickle brush for these paintings of these these trees for this uh for this workshop and of course if you want to get the the full i i ended up doing these are two videos so it's two hours of tree painting and the goal here is to fill this entire page full of trees and rocks and bushes and fields and mountains and i'm gonna assemble like a bunch of different environment landscape paintings using all these as components and using the lessons that I've learned to create a Fortnite style landscape painting. So come on along for the ride if you wanna see how all that comes together. You can watch those real time, they are entirely real time. I'm not doing any time lapse in my workshops anymore. It's all entirely real time. So go and uh, check those out. You can see every brush and every technique in detail as to how I accomplish this look and style. And as usual, I wanna thank you for stopping by. If you're painting up some trees of your own, I'd love to see them. So don't forget to tag me over on Twitter and I might give you a retweet. Otherwise, I'm here every week. So uh, come on back and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell and I will see you with another landscape painting lesson next week. This is my thing right now. I'm working on getting better at this and uh, I'd love to see your progress on it as well. Okay, see you next time, bye.